guys, my name is Keith Noradas, known as the leader and superior of Club Lawsome, aka lover of anime shows and movies, and I'm here with Colby. It's time. You ain't gonna believe what I'm about to write in news. Caleb. Now wait just a damn minute, Bobby. And uh, Sam, Simpy was supposed to show, but apparently she might arrive late. I'm not sure yet, but anywho. First things first, how are we doing this lovely Saturday afternoon? I am doing all right. Just... About as good as you can be after an eight-hour shift. Oh, wow. I don't even got a job yet. I think the last time I did this was, I think, sometime on the 4th, which was just five days before the episode came out. So, technically, a lot has happened at that month while I was gone. Throughout, throughout the amount of reschedule, so much has happened. Like, we've just got the teaser of the upcoming 7th episode, and we just got the trailer for Hasbro Hotel, finally. Got the release yeah, day. it's been a ugh, crazy week for Vivzy Pop fans. I, I wasn't expecting them to start doing teasers for the next Hell of a Boss episode so soon. Me neither, because it's already like two or three weeks after the episode just came out. And it's supposed to come out on Halloween this a month from today. I cannot wait for next month, like for Halloween to just happen. The weather getting cooler will be A plus for sure. I literally just realized that during October or November is the weather will get colder than it used to be before. But anywho, I'm still excited. Plus, I'm really excited for yeah, Hasbro Tile as well. Finally, getting has been content. Oh, it's it feels so good. Yeah, the yeah, platform just, is Amazon it, Prime, and we just got a season two announcement all in one day. That is just so hype. I love it. That's insane. I feel like their pl big plan is that on January, they're going to air the Hasbro Hotel episodes weekly. I don't know if it's like eight or 10 episodes. They're going to air on weekly. And after that, they're going to air the eighth Hell of a Boss episode sometime in March. I feel like that's their goal. Just to start the year. I feel like the eighth episode might even come up before that because if the seventh episode is coming out on Halloween. I, I can imagine by like January, the, the eighth episode will be out. Yeah, but I yeah, but to me, I just still feel like the eighth episode could most likely happen once they finish streaming out the weekly episodes of Password Hotel. With that being said, we should just get to the sixth episode because then when we watched the sixth episode, it was just an amazing. Yeah, we got just so much insight into the characters, so much background information that was all just speculation until this episode. You know, when 2023 had officially commenced, I was afraid of what to come for the podcast channel when the Owl House ended and the rise of the writer and actor strike. Luckily, I stumbled upon an indie show that I was a bit hesitant to watch, that is Hell of a Boss, and ended up invested on that show. Combine the fact that it's indie animation, which has became my biggest influence behind Blossom's newly variety of videos such as sketch pictures. With that said, where we left off from our previous Hello Boss video, we discussed about the latest two episodes of season two, that is episodes four and five. If you'd like to watch the first five parts of me and my friends talking about Vipsy Pop's animated indie series, the link is in the description down below. Now it's time to continue on as we recap and dissect Hello Boss's sixth episode of season two, that is entitled Oops. You need to know the contents of this contract. You can't just sign it. A deal made with a sin like yourself would be everlastingly binding. Perhaps I can look it over. I'm a fast reader. Oh, hmm. This is a contract giving Crimson all of Ozzy's factory assets and giving him permission to use Fizzeroli's head for a wall decoration. Wait, what? Just making sure you're paying attention. <laughs> Here's the real contract. Oh, this will be fun. I love words. The episode starts with the popular Fizzerali running a couple errands in the green ring, that is, until he ran into Blitz. As they both get into a heated argument, they got the attention of Stryker, leading them to be kidnapped and held hostage by him and Crimson. While this is happening, a fully recovered Solas has a meeting with Asmodeus but was interrupted by a video message from Crimson demanding stuff from Ozzy in exchange for Fizz's freedom. While being locked up in an unknown warehouse, 
Blitz managed to free both parties while also causing a shootout that the two are trying to escape from. As the chaos continues, Fizz brings up his traumatic experience of being left behind while nearly dying from a firework explosion on his birthday. Blitz claims that while yes, it was his fault, it was in fact an accident in which he let his jealousy towards Fizz Raleigh get the better of him that his own mother dies from the explosion. With still no luck of escaping from the evil goons, Fizz uses his improvised musical number to distract them all long enough for Blitz to create an escape route through the ceiling which worked by the way. Unfortunately, the insane striker catches up to the two dragging Fizz away, leading Blitz to shoot oil cans causing a flammable scene to drive to him in a way. Having traumatic flashbacks of the circus incident, Blitz overcomes this by saving his former friend from the blaze. Back at the Lust Ring, a wounded Fizz reunites with Asmodeus as they share a hug and kill Crimson's lawyer. As Ozzy packs up Fizzarali's robotic arm, he talks to him about Solas wanting a crystal for Blitz as Fizz allows it, claiming that he earned it, ending the episode with the two happy together. That was an episode, two the weeks. That was probably the best written episode of season two so far. There were so many things that they did extremely well. I, I thought the comedy was on point. All the exposure we got to Blitz and Fizz's characters. The, the fact that we had only seen Fizzy in like one scene of one episode. He needed that screen time that he got. And now he's possibly my favorite character in the show. Same goes with Asmodeus. I really like the dynamic with those two. And this has literally come from someone that I literally went from not liking the two all because they literally like ruined Moxie's song on the Ozzy episode to now just liking them. The dynamic between the two is like wholesome. You know? Something that the past two episodes have shown me is that Loki, Fizz, and Ozzy's relationship is healthier than Millie and Moxie's. Like, how is it healthier than Million Moxie? Like, communication-wise, or...? I would say communication-wise, and also because something I noticed in Unhappy Campers is that it feels like sort of almost a mother-son relationship in that episode specifically. Like, maybe not before that episode, but definitely in that episode. It felt like uh, Millie was constantly having to... encouraging him, but not really getting any of that in return calling him big guy, like almost like a mother would talk to her son. And obviously the way Moxie behaved in that episode didn't help. I mean, obviously that they made up for that by the end of the episode, but I feel like there is a healthier dynamic between Fizz and Ozzy. Now, obviously it's not a competition, but- I know, I understand. It, that's the vibe I picked up. I liked, I, it, was, it was pretty good. I liked the visuals of it yeah I like, like each and every episode the visual the, the art style the visuals just gets better and better and i knew that the fight scenes would just get even better every episode i did like it's just amazing i also find it ironic that despite their name they're the exact opposite of what they're being labeled like you saw asmodeus the king of lust yet when we saw the episode he's the exact opposite lust same goes to Beezlebub, who's known as the queen bee of gluttony yeah, she's the opposite of gluttony. I wouldn't say she's the opposite of gluttony because she encourages indulgence and going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when it comes to any kind of leisure or substance, to say the least. She also mentioned wanting to have party drugs but didn't get them and stuff like that. She does, however, that's something that does uh, sort of contradict her label as the Queen of Gluttony is how she notices when people have reached their limit and tries to stop them from getting out of control. So it's like gluttony, but it is a little more responsible gluttony. So you still personality-wise, like, like I saw from the Queen Bee episode of how this went over the edge of himself. Which further shows me about the opposite of Beezlebub's character. like. Beezlebub is really showing some concerns of what Bliss is doing because Bliss just went over the top when he came along on that right. episode. You know, I kind of like the movements of this guy. Just like he stretches around and like like bounces. And... It's like he's some kind of cartoon. Well, I think this is... Like the rubber yeah. hose animation style from the 20s. 
H and H, like Everyone he's animated. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're hmm. blowing my mind right now. <laughs> Speaking of Blitz, I'm really starting to like Blitz's character arc so far. Like, like ever since after watching the circus, I really want to answer the what really happened between the two. Oh. Finally, there she is. Uh, <laughs> I can't hear What's Thank up? Thank goodness. <laughs> Like, we were still continuing on dissecting the episode. We already finished recapping. So, do you like the episode? Oh. Okay. When people say it was bad, but I don't... People will say it. every episode is bad. There's this vocal minority when it comes to the show. It's popular to hate on it. <laughs> oh, poor you. But I feel like this episode was generally more well-received by its fans uh, than... Uh, previous season two episodes. The pacing in this episode was probably the best of the whole season. They didn't get too wrapped up in B-plots. The B-plot actually was kind of important because it tied into the main plot a lot more. Dark, and for just, example, yeah. this episode's B-plot was Asmodeus and Stolas having this meeting, right? Yeah, and then it eventually turned into them trying to directly help Fizz and Blitz. That's how to do a B-plot correctly. It has to relate to the A-plot. But I also going to add, like, I really starting to like Liz's character arc so far. Yeah. That's uh, right. Uh, Roll ruined everything. Again, it was not really his fault, though. Despite the down, Fizzorali nearly died. Like, my mind was blown after the flashback. From Fizzorali's perspective, it seems like Blitz did it out of spite because he was so jealous of Fizzarelli of the popularity that he got that he did right. and just abandon him. But and you see his perspective and then it's like, wait, that's not actually what happened. Yeah. But we saw what Fizzarelli, we, we get to see what Fizzarelli saw yeah. and what he interpreted that situation as. And you start to understand why there was so much resentment there. And yeah. some people say that they feel like the conflict was resolved a bit too quickly. Like, Fizz forgives the bitch a bit too quickly for like literally throwing the DMs off. Yeah, I mean, the goodness takes time. From I think this episode was more of a start. I don't, because he did say, like, in the episode, it, you know, it's kind of hard to forgive you. It, like, you didn't ruin my life, but f you still. <laughs> out of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, his life was ruined after that, but still, regardless. It was kind of huge that Fizzarelli said uh, that his life wasn't ruined by this. It was like extremely painful. It was extremely challenging time in his life. And it brought along so much baggage and this resentment and a torn apart family, basically. Just so much bad happened coming from this accident. Because of how content he is with where he is now in life, he's able to say that it didn't ruin his life. Like, it didn't ruin him permanently because given the fact of the success that he has now, and now he has Asmodeus that's by his side. And it's like, thick and thin, would, it's like he, would he even have this if that yeah. accident didn't even happen? I yeah. how he still maintains like a positive attitude even after that incident that basically crippled him. Right. I recently made a tweet saying that I feel like Fizz Raleigh doesn't like celebrating his birthday, because let me remind you, the circus explosion happened literally on Fizzarelli's birthday. The emotional damage. And you can see like a small detail where Fizz gets a card that from Blitz's dad that says, I wish you were my son. Yeah, I feel like that must have really been the cherry on top for Blitz being that jealous of Fizzarelli. I wish you were my son. Yeah, that's just painful. Then adopt him. Yeah, from Blitz's perspective, he really got the short end of the stick because he never really wanted this to happen to Fizzarelli. And yet, yeah, when the fire like... explosion happened, it was revealed that his mother died from the explosion Ooh. that he caused. Yeah, and exactly. it's like Blitz would have a... Oh, okay. Like, when I said, when Blitz's mother died from the explosion, I can understand why Barbie Wire hated Blitz because to Barbie Wire, she also felt like it was Blitz's fault that her mother was dead, and that's why she turned into drugs, you know? In her situation, like, the difference is with, between her and Fizzaroli, like, Fizz's life wasn't permanently ruined by this. Yeah, but Barbie's with life Fizzarelli, was... It wasn't, but like, Barbie's Fizzarelli's life was family, ruined. but when it was Barbie Wire's mother, that's Barbie Wire's mother as well, that's why. With Barbie Wire, the grief 
of her mother's death was just too much for her to handle. That's why. Barbie's life was ruined by this whole situation. Like, she got into drugs. She, as far as she's aware, Blitz has just led to every bad thing that's ever happened in her life. And that's why she didn't even give him a chance to explain his side of the story, especially after he ruined her whole job thing um, in Unhappy Campers. Like, it was like the cherry on top. Unhappy Campers was funny, but also sad. Yeah, it was sad to me from Blizzard's side uh, because of the fact that when he was trying to track down his sister, it was literally the one family member that he had left and with her gone. It's like he has nobody at this point. That's why it was so refreshing to see him be able to have a somewhat positive reconnection with someone in Oops. Like, he needed that so badly. And even then, he almost sabotaged it by trying to get him to make out with him at the end. Yeah, that was hilarious. Like, like please don't worry. I'd like, if, if we would make that out. Yeah, but please, yeah, bro. luckily... We'd fuck he, up the moment if we made out right now. Yeah. Luckily, he built one bridge. Hopefully, when it comes with episode 8 and 9, the full moon, and apology to her, there's mm -hmm. a 50-50 chance that Homer actually built other bridges that he destroyed. I think the most important thing we learn about Blitz's character is that the person that hates Blitz the most is himself. Even with Barbie and Fizz having it out it, for him it, it at some point. That vine. That vine. And remember... No one will ever hate you more than you already hate yourself. Right, and like, there's a line in Oops that where Blitz says like, Hey, I would hate me too. I mean, I do. He literally say that he oh, hates okay. himself, but he doesn't get to finish the sentence. Now that I think of it, I feel like the apology tour can most likely be him realizing how much he hated himself that he has to forgive, that he has to apologize to himself for Pretty much. I feel causing... yeah, a huge part of the episode is him like trying to just come to terms with himself and just start talking to himself in a healthier way. Because yeah. that is his biggest problem is self-destruction, self-sabotage, just hating himself to the core. Like an apology tour, he has to stop looking outward, but now he has to start looking inward. Right, because that's all he's been doing up to this point, is looking outward for anyone who will possibly give him the intimacy that he's so badly craving. But he can't depend on that because of everything that's happened, especially. He needs to have a better connection with himself. Someone needs to be able to get it through to him that his relationships aren't going to improve unless his relationship with himself improves. Because then he'll realize what he's doing to himself, not only doing it to himself, but also doing to his relationships as a result of his self-destruction. He probably doesn't even know how much of these situations are just him doing it to himself. After reconciling with Fizzerali, I feel like it's most likely going to start from there. Yeah, this That's is going to introduce a massive journey of self-improvement, hopefully, if there are still like four seasons of this show. I can only imagine it will get a lot worse before it gets better. That's just how I interpret it, because I it's definitely going to be a journey that is not linear. It's not going to be him just gradually improving. There are going to be a bunch of bumps along the way that will send him back into this spiral of self-hatred. Like making That's him like relapse at this relapse into his own head. Right. And like with someone who often has those relapses of self-destruction and stuff, even though I'm aware of it, it still happens. It's not something that's easy to control. And so it'll be so interesting to see that from his perspective and how he handles it, given like his relationships and where his character has gone up to this point. <sighs> but that's it. What were your favorite moments from that episode? So uh, I, I showed this episode to my friend who hadn't seen it yet, and we started just completely dying. I, I, I thought it was pretty funny the first time I saw it, but just the seeing it again, it was just so funny. Right when Fizzy reunites with Ozzy, uh, Ozzy turns around, sees Fizz, he, he goes, Fizzy! Oh my god, the it's like the funniest really thing. Fizzy! I never thought those just, voice you don't actors expect it really from having a, else, like this. Something really tells me those voice actors are really just having a good time. 
at a recording booth. Just oh yeah, they, hilarious. My, that, I think that's my favorite part about the entire show is just how amazing the voice acting is. Oh, especially that line, oh, was, right, man. That delivery was so funny. My yeah. favorite part is when Biz was trying to sing to distract everyone, and we knew he was coming up up on the spot. Distract yeah, everyone whenever, with. Whenever he was like, whenever he was singing, and then you just have this one line where he just starts going. Bleh, 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 bleh. Oh God, I cannot believe that musical number somehow worked. There was another escape attempt before that when Blitz literally caused a massive shootout, which caused the cage to break. You know what I mean? I was like, how did mm-hmm. that work on one try? How? Because, like Biz said, he's a off. Alex Brightman pull off a magnificent performance of his yeah. rally of the- His line yeah. deliveries were just insane. I think my favorite moment from him was like during the song and he just like after Blitz said, Okay, I need more I need like sixty more seconds. Yeah, so um, that he looks just starts like- running out of ideas and he just goes, Look at my face. Like he just Yeah, he, I thought that was yeah, the song is really so tall. Look at this. The fact that he was able to make a song based on any single object that he could find from that warehouse is just outstanding. Crimson's face whenever he started like singing in Italian. That was so funny. But I don't know Crimson in Italian. Doesn't that make Moxie Italian as well? I don't know. I mean, he is a mob boss, so it kind of makes sense why his reaction was like that. Before the episode happened, they were speculating that Crimson would return in this episode, which he did, and I didn't even think that Striker would be back as well. Yeah, he's losing a lot of fights because you'd think he'd learn by now to, like, not take so long to do the talking part. It's like the villain hovering over the red button that'll kill the good guys, and he just keeps oh, going over his life story instead of just pressing the freaking button. That's You're like what right. Striker did. He just keeps talking because he's so full of himself, and he's like, I'm gonna enjoy this so much. Wow, like, look, he I, is so... I love that I am about to do this thing, and then he keeps talking about it so much that he just misses his chance. Like I said, Norman Reedus version, very intimidating, very scary. Where's Edward Bosco? Just so egotistical. Very insane. I feel like he was always egotistical, but he's just a little less menacing because of, number one, like the amount of fights he's lost. He's sort of proving himself to be this pathetic one-trick pony. He's yeah. really good at capturing hey, people, not good at finishing the job. And Boots it's only a matter of time that he's actually really slowly going to go insane. Above and beyond insane. Like you saw how insane Maybe he became. If he goes insane, he'll finally stop waiting so long before just pulling the trigger. Because <laughs> this, this entire series could have ended already if he had just pulled the trigger when he had the opportunity instead of just fucking him. <laughs> I really love the scene in which Blitz saved Fizz Raleigh, like this time. Like I said before. This time I stuck around. I love it. It looks like it's been a few seconds, but you can see Fizz having a mini panic attack as he relives the prior. Yeah, yeah the Raleigh trauma, just so like, just, you know, like comes reliving back. that trauma really you came back. Me. I really like how Blitz makes sure that Fizz Raleigh doesn't have to relive that traumatic experience, and this time run towards it and confront it instead of running away, because I feel like throughout. I his feel entire like life, he was does, most likely running away from more the situation situations he's put in that would ultimately help him on his journey to help himself. Like if he, he were to, to approach every situation first. he's put in like that, like, hey, let's not run away from this anymore. Let's really think about this and what this would mean. Yeah. But isn't going away just much easier? That's why it's such a common thing to run away. It's like, instinctual almost to run away from things that make you uncomfortable but in reality that's like what make it worse you have to dive head first right into his problem like dive head first into the situation that he's dealing with this time and that's literally i felt like it's the beginning of his redeeming art yeah there, there's just a lot of things they can do with this in regards to blitz's character so it'll be really interesting to see just what he takes away from this. Like, hey, I finally didn't run away from this thing. I decided to stick around and really think about how this would impact both of us. What would happen if I decided to do this more often? Oh, you want a freaking meta? Good job. You didn't hate yourself for a day. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite moment was the musical moment. Oh, yeah. That's Kwandu was. Yes. We love the musical moment. 
The songs just get better and better. I really like that Ozzy's nickname for Fizzy is Fizzy Frog or Froggy. I think that's adorable. And I find it ironic why he called him Fizzy Frog. The fact that he has robotic arms and he can literally just hop like a frog. He can frog. bounce around. He's bounce like, around yeah, like he's a, hopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I know why he called him Fizzy Frog. I think their dynamic is just freaking adorable. I love them. Communication, I, I love. Yeah. It's what the stole ship wished it would be. Honestly, it really is stole its but better. <laughs> yeah, it's what this it's what stole its wish could have been. Stole its, but it's actually required it of. <laughs> it's stole its, but if there was actual communication. <laughs> yeah, that. Like I stole love its without it. the self destruction. Communication. Stole it now with communication. Yeah, like the proper communication, even from the ending, the communication is like that. Like the first two minutes, I and just starting to like them. Eyes taking care of Fizz was adorable. Oh yeah. I feel like something yeah. interesting though that could come up later is whenever Fizz hid the newspaper from Oz. Fizz knows that this is not a well-kept secret and Ozzy doesn't know that a lot of other people know, at least until the end of the episode when everybody just sees them. But I feel like Fizz keeping that from Oz could lead to some sort of conflict if it's not communicated. Like, hey, Oz, people know about this. What do you want to do about it? it they are just, literally closeted gays. They're really not closeted. Everyone knows. But Fizz doesn't want to tell Ozzy that. And I feel like that could lead to some miscommunication. Hopefully we'll figure that out on the next episode because, again, this is a Mammon episode. We're going to get Fizz again, probably Ozzy. And so, yeah, the, yeah it'll my sort of pick up right is, where it left off. My only prediction is it can most likely Mammon and Ozzy might have a rivalry. Yeah, it didn't seem like Oz was too fond of Mammon. He's very protective of Fizzy, and if anyone tried to lay a finger on him, he will go ballistic, as we've already seen. So I think the next episode is setting up to be a very good one. Yeah, because like Mammon, remember, he's the king of greed. He's greedy over Fizzarali. He likes the control of Fizzarali. That's why I am feel like I'm about to see on the next episode with the flashbacks and the aftermath of the circus incident. Oh, speaking of which, mm -hmm. I remember there's a line that in which Blitz said that he was trying to talk to Fizz, but they said they wouldn't speak to him. That got me questioning. Who is trying to further was push them that apart? very well could have been I Mammon. Yeah, I feel like the next episode, it has to be Mammon. That's it further definitely could have been. It, I think that could have been Mammon. Yeah, and I'm starting to believe that too, because at first it could be either him or Blitz's father. What's Blitz's father's Maybe name? Maybe both Blitz's father's name is Mammon. one or the other, but my best bet, given the fact that the next episode will be Mammon, it could be Mammon that will be splitting this two even further. Yeah, because he's like, he sees Blitz as something that can jeopardize the money he can make off Fizz. I just did that to make a kid feel so hot, though. It's just a little Christmas tree, I love it. Yeah, it's so ironic. His character design is literally a Christmas tree, given the fact that if it does upload on Halloween, it's going to be one day before people are going to put up their Christmas decorations, so... Should we place bets on when Luna will get a voice line? Okay, yes. We don't know. Because she hasn't had a line. She hasn't had a line since Seeing Stars. Yeah, that's what I'm starting to realize. The only last time she actually had played a single role in the show was literally the second episode of season two. Yeah, and it's like she's made appearances, but she hasn't said yeah, words. Yeah, she's made cameos. And I know a lot of that had something to do with Eric Lindbeck's fiance passing away. But oh. as far, from what I know, Vivzi confirmed that Luna being in episode four but not saying words was an intentional decision. Wait, her fiance died? Yes, unfortunately. What uh, happened? It was cancer. Damn, cancer stuck. I think around the time they were recording voice lines for season two, uh, that was when that happened, and so she took a leave. Technically, we did get lines from her more recent than seeing stars because episode eight came out later. 
Yeah, because episode but if eight it was had been released in its intended date, we wouldn't one, have heard a single line from person count. seeing stars. Yes, please. With that said, thank you all for being today's awesome podcast. I cannot wait for that episode. Like, this whole week has been the best week. Because we've been given oh, yeah. so much on that week. We got the teaser for the upcoming Out of the Boss episode. We finally got a release date for Aspen Hotel and season two. And it's going to yeah. be available on Amazon Prime, which means I'll be able to watch it. Since my family uses Prime. You're lucky, Pepsi because Pepsi you can also get to watch Invincible well. as well. I need to get Amazon Prime. I need to get Amazon Prime Maybe to watch Invincible season two. Fan base. This is their best decision, having Amazon Prime as their best streaming service for Hasman Hotel, because Netflix is tripping lately. Netflix is actually like, getting rid of its users by making well, the rules with the account sharing and share. They also make sure that only the worst adult shows stay on their platform. They canceled Inside Job for a rip off. They canceled Inside Job so that Big Mouth could get eight more seasons. Oh my god, and given the fact that seven seasons coming soon, like who get, who would who watches Big Mouth? Find a space to search better. Just it's so funny how Netflix will make sure the actual good adult shows don't get to stay on. So I'm yeah. Obviously Netflix doesn't have the power to cancel has been if it were on the platform, they just have the power to take it off their service, which I imagine they would not be opposed to doing. Yeah, but thank goodness Amazon Prime has a whole of Hasman Hotel. That means we're going to get even more of the Hasman Hotel content. And I simply can't wait. <laughs> By the way, I finally watched the pilot, finally, and I liked it. What did you think? Yeah! I liked the pilot. I simply love Charlie. Like, Charlie's character. Next episode, yeah, that was just, more than more. just yeah. so much exposure to that whole universe and just the different side of hell that we don't get to see much of in hell of a boss and so yeah it's really cool interpretation of hell yeah exactly. yeah it's the way vivzy pop designed hell it kind of makes me want to go there <laughs> oh god yeah, yeah, yeah. like i, I could cool i can't have to deny it no longer because this is literally hell down there I, and the way vivzy pop made her own version of hell is just so outstanding it's gonna be a good year. We're starting. We're starting the new year strong. <laughs> With that said, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, click on the notification bell, so that way we won't miss out on any more of the animation content between me and my friends. With that said, I bid you peace. Bye. Bye. Say bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Remember that? Okay, we're not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> I can what? only imagine if Tyler was here. Like th this, this. Yeah, I would this imagine would have gone Tyler off the rails like right then and there. <laughs> yeah, I would Just imagine the if Tyler guy. was in there. I speak Gen Z humor. Of course. Oh, God. I, he mentioned in an offhand comment in like the first episode of the series having a therapist i i don't even know if that was a joke or not it may have just been for the joke but if that it wasn't a joke he has a pretty shitty therapist and so world's best therapist to that's so therapist. real therapist of the year it's honestly a power move just saying hey stop talking like you're almost helping him but in a way it's like Wait, you want to die, and then and that confuses him, and then it, the same thing ends up happening. Quick, money, Ozzy, and just kill me! Yep. I'm gonna put that joke in if I make a show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be a, the best quote, like, just for your, like, Neover show. Quit monologuing and just kill me. Oh.